1958, though. What happened in 1958? 1958. Are you kidding me, Jack? I was down at the Brooklyn of Paramount with Chubby Checker singing Great Balls of Fire. I think yes was 35 or was it 45 cents? Oh, our mom and dad opened up Mitchell's. Mom, and it was a small little store, three suits and a dream. When I first heard the idea about Mitchell's, gosh, I can remember, I can remember clearly like it was yesterday. I was at Wesleyan University. My dad called up and he said, Jack, I'm gonna, with mom's help, I'm gonna open this small little men's and boys store in those days. That's a, that's a big deal, dad. You sure? He said, we're gonna do it, Jack. We're gonna have fun doing it. And they did that. They did it with a 800 square feet, three suits, and a coffee pot that mom brought from home. And the rest is history. My dad and my mother both never, ever thought it would be anything but successful. And they rolled their sleeves up, they went to work. Dad was a natural seller. Dad, dad no one had to show Dad how to sell. Dad, dad it's all, he, he started this idea of personalized service, getting to know the customer on a personalized way. He always used very simple messages, like once a customer, always a friend. You know, take care of people like they're in your home and they'll come back. My grandmother actually started with a concept when you walk through the door, it should, should be like walking into a home that how you treated your friends should be how you treated your customers. And um, that just evolved into something that was bone deep from the family to every person who worked here. We started with three suits and very little inventory. And the word got out and uh, people came in, came in and there were friends and also people we didn't know, which we made friends. I was blessed to have Ed Mitchell's friendship. You know, I think about him a lot, I really do. And he still lives on. I think as long as there is a uh, building out here in Westport that says Mitchell's, you know, Ed Mitchell is still very alive. You don't give extraordinary customer service in a vacuum. You give it through great people. And these great people then, they touch the customers and they relate to the customers and then by the way we sell clothes. I like to get, get to know the cars. I mean, number one, I like to know how he prefers this close to fit. Number two, then I like to know a little bit about, you know, their family and so on. We build up a great, great relationship and I have millions of those. Dominic's been with us for 49 of the 50 years we've been in business. And Tulio, our head fitter in Greenwich, 37 years. They know exactly how much linen the, the customers want to show or what size width on the cuffs. They, they know that. Whether it's walking someone to their car, delivering it to them, Writing them a letter that just says, you know, thanks for all you do for us. We all have a passion for doing it. And when I say we, it's not just the 10 or 11 of us that have the last name Mitchell. It's every single associate. I'm the type I'll go to the ends of the earth to make the client happy. I don't really consider them customers. They're really friends. They come in with their shoes scratched. Oh, we'll polish it. The pocketbook, they got the smear on the, you know, the lipstick. We'll clean it, no problem, wait two minutes. My shoe is slipping. Well, you should have bought it here in the first place. I, I was getting my diploma, and uh, he hoodwinkled me in to saying yes when I come in the family business. And I said, Dad, I will give you a year, but if I don't like it, I won't stay. That was 43 years ago. I think I've liked it ever since. I didn't really enjoy the retail. You could sell a suit, you could sell a suit. What was the big deal? And I worked somewhere else for, for five or six years. And then one wonderful night, my brother Bill came up. He asked me to come into the family business. I said yes, and I just absolutely loved it. And Bill and I have had this wonderful partnership ever since. I always like to say my earliest memory was picking the pins out of the carpet. We used to get a penny a pin as we vacuum the stores on Sundays. Really about six and seven I used to pass coffee on a, on a tray around to all the customers. On a Saturday I got dressed up in my khakis and my little blue blazer and my tie, probably a clip-on tie at the time. When you could see over the shirt and tie table you went out and helped pick shirts and ties and mentor with some of the sellers. It kind of became a way of life and you, at a very early age, I knew what it meant to be a part of this store. That we were a part of the community, that all these people were our friends. A lot of the people that are still working with us will joke and say, well, I used to work for them and now they work for me, which is, which is a lot of fun. Um, of course, we all work together, that's how we look at it. Probably the most significant change 
in the last 20 years um, to our business has been that we were a men's suit store. Now suits are under 10% of our business, women's is over half. My mother really was the one that gave us confidence to go into the women's business as strongly as we did. Women's, I believe, started in 1969. It evolved pretty much in the 80s as a contemporary style business. And really, when we got to the end of the 80s and we renovated this store here and allocated significantly more space and then added on shoes and handbags and jewelry to really complement the entire look and feel and needs of the woman. When I came on board, one of my questions was, are you really going to be behind women's and help me grow this business or am I babysitting something? And I got a strong commitment they were willing to grow it and a lot of good things have happened. The two boys came in, Russell and Bobby, and then we exponentially really took off. It was like it was like winning the Super Bowl. I was the first of the third generation to join the business. It was an exciting time because we also went, which was really wonderful, we went completely against the grain because we, after being here a year and a half ish, we entered into a major expansion of our business during bad times. That was a major inflection point in terms of the growth of the business in the early 90s. And then the acquisition of Richards in 1995, that was the next big milestone in the company. They made up their mind, they wanted to come to Greenwich, Connecticut, and when Jack makes up his mind, sooner or later, it's going to happen. When we sold to Mitchell's in 1995, we were a very fashion-forward store, and they were just beginning to be fashion-forward, so it was a wonderful mesh because what we did was what they were growing to, and then they've taken it and grown much, much further. Three years ago, in 2005, the Mitchell family and the Marsh family joined together, and it is so much fun doing business in the Mitchell way. We share a common philosophy of treating the customer well beyond their expectations. Every single person that walks in the store should be treated like they're coming into our home. I think that we're good at customer service because we generally like it. It's not that I like to sell clothes. It's like that I like that that person enjoyed their time, that they were in Mitchell's or Richard's or Marsh's, and that they want to come back to see us because they trust us. That's the most fun for me, that the person leaves happy. I think when people come in here, sometimes they come in to shop, but a lot of the times people have just been coming here for so long, they're friends with the associates, it's a great place to come and hang out. The customers know each other, they come to see the family. You know, fortunately for us, you know, sales usually <laughs> result out of these gatherings. They are huge givers of their time, of themselves, of their heart, of their friendship. I admire so deeply the way that they're involved in charity. Now they have their foundations, their main charities, the inner city, near and far, breast cancer awareness, local things here in Westport. It seems like everyone in town has the Mitchells behind them. It's been an unbelievable, wonderful journey. And I think the journey is still ahead. I, I know, I speak for myself, I'm not retiring. I think the future is incredibly bright. Uh, we have a tremendous team of non-family and family working together. I can see a lot of the uh, grandchildren take part. I mean, Todd's daughter, she knows everything about jewelry. I open the store a lot in the morning and occasionally I bring my three and a half year old daughter, Haley, down with me. Kind of flash forward to like, oh my God, this could be her someday. This could be her store. I actually have a dream someday of having all the fourth generation within the business. I hope I live long enough to see some of my granddaughters running the business as well as my grandsons. All of us expect there'll be a hundredth anniversary. All I know is that 50 years from now, that hundred year celebration, I'd like to be there for that one. Happy, happy 50th anniversary. Congratulations on your 50th year in business. It's been a great run. You deserve it. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Here's to 50 more. Look forward to another 50 exciting and innovative years. Hope that the next 50 years are just as successful. I pledge to you that the next 50 will be as bright or brighter than the last 50. Thank you very, very much. Thanks to all of our wonderful customers for a tremendous 50 years.
Without you, none of this could have happened. It's been a great ride, and I know we all agree it'll only be better down the road. Well, there really are no words, uh, for me anyway, to, to say thank you uh, to all of you out there who have, have helped us grow our business from 1958 to 2008, but I'll, I'll try with the proverbial thank you. Thank you! It was 1958, Bill. Can and you gas remember? was 37, 37 cents a gallon. 1958, Bill. What happened in 1958? 1958. I was singing Great Balls of Fire with... <laughs> so, Jack, what happened in 1958? I've got, I don't have a clue. <laughs>